near, near, dear. <laughs> oh no, well, no. um, this is Calcat the Calcatster, and this is the first breakout to the movies, and uh, um, this is basically a review of a movie that, although I, I mentioned that <laughs> they would boycott and not go see because oh, our J.K. Rowling is, is anti-trans and annoying. Um, I went and saw it anyway. Um, <laughs> I saw Fantastic Beasts 3, um, even though, it, 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 yeah, I mentioned it on the, the, the uh, commented on the Jesse Gender site and, and the other one, the Council of Geeks site and some of the others that I would not go, but I ended up going because it was $8 and it was cheap. And there was hardly anyone there, <laughs> so so I, I went to I went to see Fantastic Beasts: The Secrets of Dumbledore, and yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, well, there. I figured the cast are not involved in Mr. Rowling's rants, and the crew is not. There, she, she's a producer. And she helped write the story, but she wasn't. The director, it was director with David Yates. She wasn't any of the cast, so I figured, eh, why not? And I know Ezra Miller just got got in trouble a couple times, so I don't know him, but I know he got in trouble. And so they they wanted to bury the story because Ezra Miller got in trouble. Like they, they had the actor, they they got in trouble. Yeah. And he's he's trans, but he's not. I would say he's more acting than he's actually trans because like he's for rallying. Um, there's <laughs> just clearly, um, something odd about that. I think he's just putting on an act. Others don't put on an act, but he's putting on an act. Um, and, well, he's not putting on an act in Hawaii when he was getting in trouble, the actor. But, but that's beside the point. Anyway, so I went to see a movie where they could have easily cut his character out and replaced him with uh, his character. Um, who's a, who's a Dumbledore, apparently. Yeah. Um... The the thing is though that that yeah they they introduce the, it's a retcon because <laughs> uh, when when J K Rowling said oh Dumbledore's gay she said Dumbledore's gay after Harry Potter seven and eight were over so it's so she's retconned it and and, and, he's, and he's it's not but but in this movie he he totally is. Apparently he's he's totally into uh, uh, the uh, the bad guy <laughs> story, um, Grindelwald. Uh, uh, I'm not sure when this movie takes place in the timeline. I'm guessing 1930, maybe 31. Uh, there's major parallels to Nazi Germany, Hitler and stuff. And there's a scene in a, a German ministry where they go over there and, of magic, and there's a, a meeting there. There's politics. There's there's uh, there's the cake guy. I, yeah, I'm blanking all the names, but the cake guy, <laughs> the cake, the bakery guy, whose whose wife ran off with um, him in the last one, the bad guy. Uh, he's he's a uh, Christians of Dumbledore. Uh, um. I think the main problem with these Fantastic Beast movies is the premise is incredibly weak for all of them because it's not that interesting to have a magical zoologist running around like looking at magical like CGI creatures. That's just not interesting. Uh, that's the main problem with the, the whole thing is it because they don't really. It's sort of like they did a history of the Apocrypha of the Wizarding World and basically said, okay, we're going to show you some of that from 100 years ago. And it's like, why? They've, they've already been there. It's sort of like those Star Wars prequels. It's like, well, we know how Vader becomes Vader. We didn't need to see it. Um, okay, so we know how, you know, <laughs> we know um, what happens to Grindelwald. You can't fight Dumbledore. Uh, uh, they retcon in the, uh, they retcon it in that he has a locket around his, like, arm that makes it so he, 
he can't physically fight him because it would hurt him or something, which is really strange. And they got a new actor. They didn't get a depth. They got somebody else to play him with this Hitler haircut. And it's really obvious they're doing this. You know. This commander. I keep forgetting all the names. They're they're really like they're just gone. Uh, I know that Newt Scamander is the 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 guy the the the, uh, the other guy with the uh, the critters, but I keep forgetting the the bakery guy. He's he's a non-entity really. He's supposed to be the glue that holds the whole thing together. They're gonna try and rescue Queenie, and she's captured by the bad guy. And yeah, he's got this locket thing, and he's weird setup where immediately in the beginning of the story like it's real to the audience his father and his two little kids and his wife and they're like in their seats squirming and stuff uh, <laughs> kind of suggests that they uh, them um, watching the theater and uh, and um, the the uh, just nonchalantly rather rather bored actually his delivery uh, uh, the, uh, the the other guy, they're going down for tea, I guess. And Dumbledore and, and the bad guy, Grindelwald. I guess this took place earlier, before he turned into a bad guy or something? Or, and he, he, it's that he loved him once or something. And it's just, it's, it's, the delivery is so wooden that it's like, wow, he, yeah, he really loves him. Sure. Not. <laughs> it's like the most wooden delivery ever. It's like, I loved you once. Mm. Okay. If he actually was a gay man, he would be delivering that way more flamboyantly. <laughs> no. I'm not buying it. Not for a minute. But it's J.K. Rowling who probably said, No, play it like that. I think Johnny Depp probably would have been a better, done a better line delivery with that one. Um, but they got this new guy who does an okay job later on being evil and being the wizard fearer, but, uh, yeah. Um, Scamander then is seen in the woods in the dark. You can't really see what's going on, really. It's really, really dark. They do this dark woods thing. Uh, and, you, and very, very Cronenberg, very, uh, very, uh, um, Lovecraftian thing. The creature, sort of a unicorn crossed with a, a deer, crossed with a lizard. Uh, kindred or something? The Kindle? or Yeah. They've never mentioned them before, but they're in this movie. These are little critters. And the female critter gives birth. And the bad guys show up to grab the child kinder thing. Probably saying that name wrong. Um, and... and uh, Take it and um, and kill it. I guess they're gonna kill it. A little kid kept asking his dad, "What's going on? What what are they doing to it?" Oh, and the little kid can't explain it. Keeps killing it and bringing it back from the dead. The little kid's gonna freak out. So yeah, that was so that was a little PG thirteen. So it was definitely like, okay, how do you explain that? Um, but it was like, oh my goodness. Um, yeah. So bad guys like reanimated its corpse as a zombie, basically. So that so that their whole plan at the end in the end of the movie and it, it doesn't make it a lick of sense otherwise. To the Dumbledore movie. Okay, there's this critter that gets killed. Taken to the bad guy's lair. The bad guy's gonna use it for his nefarious plot later on. Um, which is an incredible coincidence because like how would how would he like even know to do that? Uh, are the is are the wizarding the wizards in this universe just not very observant or or what? Um, <laughs> uh, they they imply that that Grindelwald has at least some sort of mental powers or like is able to see the future or whatever. So they they bring Dumbledore brings together his his early version of the Dumbledore army basically. But they're all adults and they're all going to go on this mission. And then we're introduced to the a black lady teacher, I think from Hufflepuff, who <laughs> I think is what she's from, and, and she wants to like do the and the um, a young version of Minerva shows up from from uh, Hufflepuff too, I think. No, no. Well, maybe it was um, I don't know. Yeah, you know, a young version of her shows up. Uh, so you also have some other other tie-ins. Oh. 
Okay, um, I think, I think, I think they said the, I'm not sure who the, the black teacher lady was supposed to be. But there's this other, other guy who is recruited by the bad guys. They took away the memory of his sister Lestrange. He's black, but Lestrange is white. It was a little odd in the last movie. Adopted, I guess. Half sister, yeah, stepsister. Um, yeah, so odd. Uh, <laughs> uh, they they do establish that Dumbledore has a brother that works at the at the at the that bar place near Hogwarts. We get to see Hogwarts a couple times, but Hogwarts is a century ago. So, uh, <laughs> um, so um, almost a century ago. It's got to be 1930. Yeah, so. Uh, and and the Harry Potter books actually took place half a decade before the actual events, but the movies took place during the events, so that like the original books started in 1998, but in the movies they started in 2000, 2001, so that's, that's different. So yeah, so they they're sort of playing with the timeline. These other people couldn't actually have known these other future people at all. It doesn't match up, but yeah, I'm presuming that the that this is a later story written currently that is written by people who actually weren't there and are just like equating everything to coincidence. They they weren't there. They they were just like okay, this must have been what happened. Yeah, yeah, memory being really good. That's <laughs> it. Really what happened. Um. But then it would kind of make sense because then it would be like, oh, okay, you have you have events that don't match up because the person telling the story is an unreliable narrator. <laughs> J.K. Rowling, uh, <laughs> her own stuff is unreliable. Um, yeah, uh, so so um, yeah, it it has it is okay. So bad guy wants to go to the. German ministry and the good guys, the Dumbledore army, sneak in there, and they, and they, that's what I'm going to call them. I don't think they were called that in the movie, but I'm going to call them that. Uh, Potter people know that. Uh, <laughs> that's what they're supposed to be. Because he can't fight the bad guy because of this locket thing, even though, like, he's an incredibly powerful or a wizard and he can do all this other stuff. He can't just break the spell. No, that would be too easy. Um... <laughs> Um, and, and the, yeah, the, 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 the LGBT part that she forces in there is really, really stilted and doesn't work because she doesn't like that. So she's showing her, you know, the writer, <laughs> she's like, 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 I don't like this, ah, they have to all be all straight, ah. It's like, yeah, it doesn't work because there's no honesty there. The characters are just behaving in a way that doesn't really make sense, even for wizards. You think in the wizarding world, they would, <laughs> in their universe, they wouldn't have that as a moral problem, we wouldn't think, because that's, a, that's strictly a Judeo-Christian and, and other religion thing recorded. Uh, the, the idea of, of them... Yeah, so I'll do that a little over again, I guess. The... the the, I was I was trying to say that the, in the wizarding world they shouldn't have moral quandaries about same sex at all because they can they can polymorph into other people and they can do hang out with other things that would not be an abomination to them so they shouldn't have any problem with that mm, the only thing that they wouldn't like is muggles pairing with muggles that's the only thing they wouldn't like because clearly Newt is um, clearly nude is his own slash fiction for animals. Um, but also, um, yeah, they, they, it's not genuine enough. There's an unreliable narrator, JK. Like, maybe the story is, I don't know if it was recording, so I'm kind of going over this again. Um, the, the idea that, that some of these events don't make sense, they're an incredible coincidence, going to the ministry thing, uh, the, 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 Newt happens to see the birth of this magical, a kindred creature uh, happens to get zapped by the bad guys. The bad guys don't try to kill him to st stop the witness from seeing something. The dark, it's dark. Uh, uh, they don't do that. Uh, the, then later on, uh, Grindelwald even asks them whether there were one or two of them, or whatever. And the other guy, 
and the other uh, um, Credence, uh, Credence and also Dumbledore, uh, the other Dumbledore, the nephew. It's a nephew, actually. Spoiler. <laughs> this is his nephew. Uh, the Ezra Miller character. Uh, he, uh, he isn't sure whether there was another one. Because he wasn't there. He wasn't there, so. But, uh, so they have this setup where they want to go to the... Do, like, the like the, the wizard shooter thing. So they want to do, like, the German Ministry of Magic. And they have this whole, like, setup for this obvious, really obvious parallel between the, them and the Nazis. Really obvious, obvious parallel. Um, so it's got to be 1930. Uh, and, and there's, like, attempts on them and stuff. And there's two other wizards, and they're all running for some sort of wizarding thing. It's not clear that it's a wizard election year or not. I guess it's supposed to be, but it's not clear. Uh, I guess it is. So, so Grindelwald finds a way to clear himself completely of, of all charges, even though half the wizards in the universe were there for the last movie and saw him kill people. But that's okay. Uh, we're going to clear him. That should set off their radar if they were actually thinking for a moment. Like, how come he suddenly cleared? Has he put some kind of enchantment on us that's made him cleared? Because people died in the last movie. Like, yeah. Why, why is this suddenly good that he, he can run for office? I know it's a parallel. I know what they're doing. They're basically saying, okay, it's like an evil politician guy, Wink, becoming like... <laughs> becoming like a dictator and taking over Wink or wanting to Wink. Um, they're not just saying Hitler. They're saying that other guy. They're saying Trump. <laughs> it's really obvious. But but yeah. Um, oops. And then and then failing at the end because Trump. Uh, it's clearly what they're saying. And a little bit of Boris Johnson thrown in there, but he actually got a light. Uh, he's still there. So it's a little bit of Boris Johnson there, if not. Um, but but not directly. Indirectly. It's a it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. Um, but yeah, the, the wizards behave in the story like they don't see it coming, which is weird. It's like, okay, they, they're they they're playing Dumbledore's army that comes together. That I'm calling Dumbledore's army. The, the adults who decide to team up with a dude that now has a mumble guy from the cake place that has a wand now. He has a little bit of magic power for some reason. Not, and I don't explain it. He just has the ability to be a wizard now. Um, they, he never was a wizard before. He just is. And they keep saying it's a fake wand, but is who's giving him the powers then? Is it Dumbledore giving him powers? Because that doesn't make sense. And if he gives them powers, wouldn't that make Dumbledore's, like, hand thing go and mess with him because he knows what he's doing? Um, <laughs> squeeze his wrist. But yeah, uh, yeah, there's just some weird, weird coincidences in here. And I get, like, it's like, yeah, the, the Wizarding World wouldn't care if he was in its retconned. He wasn't. Um, they had the idea of them having having the, like, okay, the original Harry Potter books took place in the 1990s and, and then early 2000s. And, but the movies took place in early 2000s, 2001 to 2008. It's roughly when the movies took place, 2008 to 2009. Um, um, so the timeline is different. So in the movies, the timeline is... Is is screwed up, and and I figured that that if it's supposed to be 1930 or so on the rise of Hitler, then they got magic Hitler, <laughs> and then he's got the hair and everything. You might as well do the little mustache. Um, but but yeah, the um, the idea that he's gonna fight the bad guy, but through his proxies or his avatars, as these other guys, uh, the one lady, the the assistant lady, makes a copy of the. The briefcase, they, they don't do the polyjuice thing or the or the other one where they clone them, this little potion thing. They clone the cases and run around, but um, but uh, the end. Uh, in the uh, the ministry thing, and then there's this, yeah, set up for this wizarding war that allegedly happens. Um, in, I'm thinking the whole thing is an unreliable era. I'm thinking it's being written currently by someone in the future at Hogwarts that that in the 21st century that's like, I don't know how these events actually happened, but I'm guessing, so I'm putting all these weird coincidences in here even though they don't go together. I'm figuring that's what's going on. It's, it's, it's like, because, it's really, yeah, like I said earlier, really the idea of them, of them, of this guy who has a, a menagerie of critters in a, 
in a suitcase that goes into a large menagerie. Uh, this guy is the most interesting savior of the world and everything, and, and his and his sidekick who has a bakery and gonna rescue his girl, his ex girl, Queenie from the Bat Guy and all that. Um, yeah, it, it sounds too fanciful. It sounds too fantastical that that he's actually. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, so he couldn't be what he is. Um, <laughs> there's so many issues with it. Um, uh, I don't know if it was necessarily a... Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, it's... It has, you know, the plot points. I mean, they had to recast Johnny Depp with this other guy who, uh, who acts with Jude Law there, and, uh... And it's not convincing that he's uh, gay because he's not flamboyant enough, and the other guys neither. And and they're they're clearly not into each other. There's no chemistry at all. Uh, they 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 don't like each other, but that that's not chemistry. That's <laughs> but but yeah. So so you have this weird, um, yeah, like they're just like trying to prove something that retconning this idea in there that so that Rowling can make her anti-trans rant in the story it's kind of in there um, and it's like like it doesn't work because David Yates is like trying to prepare it by directing it in a different way and, it, and, it, and it's like no, no. Um, <laughs> so we have yeah we have them all on the they go on a train go to Hogwarts they go to, they go to the ministry, the German ministry. They they hit all the buttons. They go all all the places. They go to places that remind you of of the Harry Potter universe. Look, we're here. We're on the train. Ooh, we're we're, we're at Hogwarts a couple times. Ooh, we're doing magical things and within earshot of other teachers and and the Slytherin kids who offer the cockroach. Death. That was that was funny. There was one funny scene where the the bakery guys. Uh, tries these gross uh, food that the, the little Slytherin kids give him, and they're in those cockroaches, um, <laughs> and and um, yeah, um, uh, so, yeah. So that that was funny, but uh, but is he is he actually like a? He's, yeah, he actually he's got a wand. They give him a wand, and it's like, is he really a wizard or is he not or? Is Dumbledore just giving him powers like he gives the other people in Dumbledore's army that we call him in the story? Um, they're not called that in the story, but that's kind of what they are. That the early one. They go to the room of requirement and everything. So, and they take the cases and they go to the Switzerland mount up on the mountain thing. And, and this guy has been reanimating the little alien thing. And that's another thing that's, uh, or the, the, the deer lizard, basically. The, the 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 Kindle the kindred it sounded like Kindle is what they were saying, but that's not what they were saying. <laughs> Kittle Kittle or something. Yeah, you know, if it's a Kestrel, then that would make sense. But they didn't say that. They didn't say Kestrels know the dead. That's a different creature. That's a different creature entirely. Um, you would think also that there's so many instances in the story where if the magic people were just thinking. Like okay, you have you have the German mystery part where they got the <laughs> where they have them going. Well, Voldemort's here, but he's at this point it's still a bad guy. So why are we letting him in here? And then oh, we're gonna like declare that he's not the bad guy in this next scene in this other hall where they're having a meeting and there's because there's an assassination attempt and magic stuff happens. So we're gonna explain that away, and instead of just saying wait a minute, maybe he orchestrated that so that he could then be a martyr. Or pretend to be so that they go. Oh, we like you now. They they should have seen through that immediately and gone. Wait a minute. He's they have they claim they have seers, but they don't. Yeah. Uh, the same thing at the end. The bad guy is like cradling the zombified critter, and then the zombified critter is gonna bow and make him the president of the the wizards. It's like no, he obviously has manipulated the critter. It's really obvious he's doing did something to it, put a spell on it or something, and it's obviously acting out what he's doing. It's like no, no, don't listen to this guy. Don't make him like anything because he's clearly staged this with this zombified, fucked up critter. Is like, Bleh. 
they have fortunately have another one that happened to be there and they're all like oh yeah we'll use that one and that one will say Dumbledore's a good guy at the end but uh, <laughs> this Dumbledore doesn't end up being commander of everything he doesn't want to be but they do end up doing a duel at the end I won't give everything away um, they end up figuring out a way to do that, and very reminiscent of the final Harry Potter of Harry Potter Voldemort scene. Very reminiscent of that. Um, but that reminds you of other things that were done better. And that's the main problem with the whole thing. The whole Fantastic Beast thing. Is, is it reminds you of everything else, but doesn't do it nearly as charmingly. It's just, it, it, it's like, okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, it's like, you know, the very reason that some of the cast completely passed on the cursed child, they were going to do that. I, I, <laughs> and Daniel Radcliffe's like, I don't want to do that. The guy that played Harry Potter's like, I'm not doing that. I mean, that story's stupid. I'm not doing that. <laughs> like, it's, it's like, well, I'm not going to do it either, Dan. Um, <laughs> I wasn't invited, but I'm not going to do it either. Um, Yeah, it's like the Fantastic Beast idea is like, you know, based on something that was entirely not, um, yeah, like they just, they decided, hey, we're gonna, we're just gonna show you stuff you've already seen and kind of go through the motions and not have our heart in it and we're just gonna do like the thing and, yeah, and they rescue Queenie because secretly she's actually working both sides and she's gonna... Surrender, and then and then the other other spy dude, black guy, the little strange guy. He uh, Lestra they called him little strange. He uh, he gets out. Uh, what the hell's the name of that cake guy? And the cake guy's a main guy, but for some reason I'm blanking. Him. Um, and you have yeah, you have Ezra Miller's character, who's still in it. And they didn't cut him out. Uh, they had to release the movie, so um, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, is there some reason he looks like Snape? In this, <laughs> is there some reason they made him look like Snape? Pro is he like a, an ancestor of the Half Blood Prince? Is that what's going on? Because th then he'd be a Dumbledore. Be no, he's not. Clearly, Snape is not a Dumbledore. Uh, but yeah, they do explain the brother away as saying, "Oh, he's got. Oh, he had a brother. I didn't know he had a brother." Like, wouldn't they know that? They're teachers in the Hogwarts and. I know I understand that in this version of the story it's supposed to take place in 1930 when they didn't have, you know, anything they've got now like cell phones and immediate contact. But clearly the wizard world in the story does have immediate contact with things. There are scenes where Queenie shows up to hang out with her ex and they don't explain them and if she can do that immediately and then leave, then she can leave anytime she wants. Like, the, yeah, what's going on there? And, uh, there's a scene where Newt rescues his brother. So there's brothers being rescued from places. Or being lost in places. Uh, there was a scene which they were trying to be poignant. In which Newt and Dumbledore are talking about Dumbledore's past. And his having accidentally uh, cruciatus and killed his own sibling. <laughs> uh, it's one of the, the backstories of Dumbledore was that he... Uh, his brother and his sister. And his sister was like a like a... Like an, or she was like, but an untrained one, sort of a powerful wizard kind of thing, and and there was a fight. I guess they were having an argument, and the brothers shot their wands, and one of them killed the sister. So, yeah, they didn't go to Azkaban for that. Um, but yeah, uh, that that and there's this scene that's mentioned in there, like like he's reading the text. It's not even poignant. He's just reading the text. Jude Law is just like I'm reading the text. Um, yeah, there's some, some of this is a mess. Um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't awful. There were parts that were fun. I'm not completely knocking it, but there were parts that were forced that didn't, and there were coincidences that were incredible. You don't, you don't, wouldn't they know the critter looked messed up and it was zombified at the end? They would have been like, it's a zombie of some kind. It's... It's been reanimated from the dead. It's dead, I can tell. Wouldn't there be those kind of people that can tell that? And it dies. And they had to try to explain it to some little six-year-old kid who's freaking out in the theater. And his, to his dad had to explain it to him. <laughs> he was like, what's going on? I don't understand. Um, but yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> but yeah, maybe it was eight. But anyway, that. But uh, yeah. So so. Yeah, and it was like fake blood, CG blood. Going. But if it's a creature from a magical realm, is it technically? Yeah. I mean, just say it's a Pokemon. He'll understand. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> get that. Yeah. He trapped it in his Pokeball. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, that would be an interesting crossover in the universe. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. Uh, I think what made the, the Harry Potter stories fun in the original was. Well, two things made them more fun. Uh, the main thing is, they were children growing up and coming of age in a weird setting that was alien and weird, and people thought they were, you know, as, as kids would think, they're uh, ostracized by the world because they're not adults yet. And you know, that's the whole... The same thing with X-Men, same thing with the mutants, same thing with a lot of the superheroes and things like that. Um... In in the new one, that's the main problem with the new one is they're all clearly adults. They're playing like they're in Harry Potter world, and it's and it doesn't work. It's just kind of sad in parts. It just doesn't work because no, you're you're you know uh, this the target. Uh, you're you're okay. You're saying okay. The target audience is going to be like in their forties or fifties now, and they're going to be like watching this, going like yeah with their kids, yay. But it's not charming like that. Um, you could do a Harry Potter spin-off sequel update thing. But if you're going to do that, have it be the like kids at Hogwarts again. Do that again. That's more interesting than the adults running around going, we must stop another wizarding war from Wizard Hitler. It's like, yeah, that's more interesting. So, yeah, uh, anyway, I probably rambled on for 40 minutes on this movie. But yeah, there there were a lot of, and only because parts of it worked, and it was frustrating and annoying that parts of it worked, and parts of it really, really didn't work. Um, yeah, they could have left the subtext out that they put in there, forced it in there, and said, oh, oh, he loved him. It's like, it was so forced that it's like, leave that out. Uh, if you're not going to go there, leave it out, because, not because it's prudish, but because you didn't make it make any sense. You don't believe it for a minute. That <laughs> and the final battle thing at the end. Yeah, I knew that was. Everybody knew that was coming. Everybody in the theater knew. You know. Nobody came out of the theater clapping as the credits rolled or anything. They were like, oh, God. <laughs> Somebody groaned in the front row. <laughs> uh, is that the end? Uh, ooh, the dad guy who was all like, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was kind of weird. Ew. Coincidence, one on top of the other. Like, why, why would they do what they're doing? The assassinations didn't even make sense because why wouldn't they be whisked off somewhere? I'm going to ask him. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the um, Nagini's not in part three at all. They don't mention her. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, although they do, the, the, the one part that works is Dumbledore and his brother, Jude Law and the brother have chemistry that works. Not so much Newt and his brother that show up at one point, get rescued from the crab scorpions. Crab scorpions. And they seem to really like the scrap crab scorpions part, so there's a bunch of that in the end credits. Even though that scene, although, although kind of... Creepy and, and cute was also not nearly as charming as the first movie, where where they had sort of like whales and mermaids and weird shit going on. And uh, it just worked better in the first one. I think this probably would have been better just one movie and not add all that extra stuff. I think I think the whole Fantastic Beast thing. Just, okay, this is a quirky guy who goes on adventures and he has like like pet. My magical critters that he hangs out with and not do all that other like highfalutin monster war wizard war or, or let's play allegory allegorical with Nazis and fascism and stuff because that doesn't make sense this is Harry Potter 
Voldemort is not fascist. Voldemort in the original was just evil. Was evil and wanted to do evil stuff and take over. And, and they didn't think they'd be ready for that too. When they weren't. Um, so part of the problem was the, the or orchestra execution. Yeah. But it's part of the problem with a lot of the David Yates, uh, Harry Potter movies is they were is he tended to gloss over parts where he shouldn't have and tended to, like, I believe he did um, a couple of the final ones. And, and the longest movie of it was um, The Order of the Phoenix and, and uh, The Dragon. I don't know if he did The Dragon one. But Order of the Phoenix was one of the longest books. And it was the shortest movie. So he cut out, like, a third of it. It would have been a miniseries. It was long. I can see why he did that with the fin final one, because the final one, Deathly Hallows, the first part of that book is just depressing as all get up. But <laughs> I can see why he cut that down and made it four parts. But really, yeah, the other one should have been four. And, and um, um, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire should have been three hours instead of two, and they should have shown the rest of the Hippogriff and the Dragon and all that. Uh, but it was only two. Uh, <laughs> it should have shown more of the other stuff. Yes, uh, yeah, and the thing I was saying you know, earlier is that the, what made the Harry Potter movies work wasn't the nostalgia of everybody in the audience now being 40 and having children, but rather them remembering when they were children. And, and the mystery of the magic of going out and going on adventures and defeating bad guys and defeating evil, and that's kind of missing. A little bit. Anyway, so that's my review. <laughs> um, two and a half stars. Uh, two and a half stars. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't terrible. It was about average. It could have been better. Yeah, and, and any of the other stuff that seemed forced was probably J.K. Rowling saying, I want this note to be in here because I retconned Dumbledore's sexuality. Like, you didn't really need that at all. I, I, you, you literally could have left that out. It, it still would have made sense because there's brotherly love. That, that I'm not being prudish. I'm just saying they, they they just needed to leave that out because they couldn't do it right. So yeah. Anyway, there.